morning, everybody. I know it's been a long time since I did a video. I got a lot of interesting stuff. I know I got the sun behind me here. So I moved, we're building a garage. They're pouring the concrete today. I'm gonna to show you a little detail now about how, we're, how they're pouring the concrete and what I'm doing to get ready for a coating in 30 days from now. So this is a four inch slab uh, wire mesh reinforced. Um, right there is the metal keyway that they put across the um, apron. So if the concrete shrinks, which it will, it will crack on a nice straight line. So just starting in the back corner, they're pouring about a six inch slump. Um, they're gonna pour this whole thing in one piece. KR Concrete and Masonry did the concrete work here. They did a fantastic job. I'm just gonna walk you inside here and show you uh, what they're doing now. They're filling the, uh, the buggy, they're running it over, they're pouring it out. Again, four inches thick, they're using a vibrating uh, straight edge to level off the concrete and then they're going to both float it and broom finish it when they're done. I do have two uh, areas here that are haunched out uh, which is going to be for a lift that I'm installing. Those are the two uh, where the two feet are going to land. Hello folks, it's good to be back. I know it's been a very long time. I need to catch up with everything that's going on in the background. Um, personally, I moved. I'm sitting actually in my new garage now, which is gonna be the next video. Um, we moved our offices to accommodate the business uh, for the online sales, which has picked up tremendously. Um, we have pretty much backed out of the service end of business. Uh, we need to focus so much time to the material sales and support that we haven't had time to go out on job sites and actually do the physical work. Um, so that is why you haven't had a video in a while and I, I really apologize to all my subscribers. Uh, please hang in there, we're gonna have more videos coming up. I, I do have plans for the future. So um, this video, what we're gonna be doing is I have a 1,500 square foot pole barn, uh, and what we're gonna do is a no prep floor. I always told people, if ever you're gonna try to put an epoxy floor in and not do preparation, I would recommend having the concrete applied with a broom finish, so there's texture on the floor, and then when you apply your epoxy, it can bite onto that texture. Uh, that's what we're gonna do here, but I need to start with the joint filling uh, we have saw cut joints about every 10 or 12 feet throughout the floor. Uh, we're going to fill the joints uh, with our fast set joint filler and then apply our, um, it's basically our 500 square foot flooring system on top of that um, full flake. Um, so I'll flip this camera around. I'm going to show you what we have here. I'm going to show you the texture on the floor and we'll get at it. So first off, I don't know if anybody noticed the sound quality difference. I finally got a microphone and hopefully this makes the sound much better throughout this whole process. So this is the floor. Uh, this is uh, 1,500 square feet. It was uh, installed with a broom finish, and I'll show you a close-up of texture. So if you can see that texture, That's what we have all over the floor, light broom finish. So I feel confident enough with our primer that our primer is gonna penetrate right into this and we're not gonna have any issue. But I'm doing this to prove a point. Uh, one, our primer works extremely well. And two, if you have a rough textured concrete, um, you can go to get away without the primer, or with, I'm sorry, without the prep work. So uh, these little grind marks, by the way, were from birds. My garage doors are on back order indefinitely. 
So we built the pole barn, and within 24 hours, I think every bird in the state came in here and pooped on the floor. So I did have to grind that off because obviously nothing is going to stick to the bird poop. So that was the only prep work I did so far. So I'm going to get set to fill the joints, and we're going to go from there. Okay, of course I didn't record the first joint filling there. It's been a while, apparently. So uh, this is the CFS fast set joint filler. This is a dual cartridge tube, 300 milliliter by 300 milliliter. Um, you put this in your dual cartridge gun. In this particular case here, this is a DeWalt DCE591 dual cartridge gun. This is, runs off a 20 volt battery. This to me is like one of the best tools ever. So you take your tubes, you put it in the gun, Oop, get lined up, lock it in. Now here's the important part. You need to purge the air out of this. So you have to hold the tube in this position to purge the air out. You put the tip up in the bag, you pull the trigger, and you'll see the material come up. Now push the air out, I turn upside down. I get a little bit out. Now the, all the air is purged out. Now I'm just going to go down and do this joint. I'm going to move this camera a little closer so you can see in detail what I'm doing here. So what you want to do is you just want to get a rhythm. So you're overfilling the joint slightly with the material. And a rolling cart works fantastic to sit on while you're filling joints. Now if you have a low spot like that, I back up. I just hit it again really quick. Like that. Okay, so like I said, I'm not preparing this floor at all. I did need to grind bird poop off the floor, but this is a broom finish all over everything. Again, I have those bird screens there, but if you look underneath, this is rough concrete all over this floor. So there's zero prep work at all. We're gonna put the low viscosity primer down on this which is going to penetrate right into this. And then I'm gonna put the intermediate coat on top of that with the flakes. And then tomorrow, we're actually gonna do a urethane top coat, which I recently added to the website, uh, which you'll see um, if you go into the store. Now, I have to say this, I have to give credit where credit's due. Uh, Brent, one of our customers, purchases a lot of our high performance urethane clear coat, and he said he always uses it to coat the flake floors, because it's easier to work with than the polyaspartic. Polyaspartics are rapid set materials and they're, they're very, not very easy to work with. I will readily admit that, I do this every day in the polyaspartics, you just have to move so fast it's hard to pay attention to detail. So he recommended the urethane, I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna try this, it sounds like a great idea. So that's what I'm doing, I'm also, like I said, adding it to the store, that's how much I believe in it. So you're gonna see us adding the uh, urethane top coat probably tomorrow, I hope, um, after we get done with everything today. All right, so I'm going to start mixing this. Uh, believe it or not, I don't even have my 18-inch rollers here yet. My wife is bringing them. She will be here momentarily. She had to run by the store and pick them up for us. And when I say store, I mean our online store. So uh, also some news. We removed all the numbers from our products to make things simple. So this is just the CFS low viscosity primer. Uh, and we're going to be doing dark gray. So I'm going to mix this up now. I'm going to start squeegeeing this out. God willing, my wife shows up right at the perfect time, and I can put a uh, roller cover on and start back rolling. By the way, this floor is 1,500 square feet, so I have three... 500 square foot kits here. Yes, you hear turkeys in the background. My neighbor has turkeys down the street here. If it's not the turkeys or the goats, could be coyotes, you never know around here. It is a beautiful day. It's around 74 degrees, I believe. 
Um, light wind, I'm hoping it doesn't get too gusty, but we'll find out. I just have to get this done at this point. I want to get this done before they do the driveway. Once they do the driveway, you have to be real careful on the edge in the front. This way here, if I have extra, I can literally push it right over the side and just let it run down. Doesn't hurt anything. So Jeff is actually at the store um, right now at our offices. Like I said, we moved our offices. We're getting signs put up, and he's there uh, monitoring the sign installation. So I'm going to try to get this done in the meantime. Always make sure you get these edges really good. Okay, here we go. Now, like I always tell everybody, once you mix this stuff up in the bucket, do not play around. It can't sit in the bucket more than a couple minutes. So I set the bucket there, but like the the timer is starting right now. So we got to get this stuff out quickly. I'm going to leave this on real time. Now you always want to pour this out and monitor where you're at so you have enough material. So this is 1,500 square foot. This should take us a third of the way. A third of the way is one bay and a third into the next one. So I'm going to watch right off the bat here. Use your puddle. Wet up your rollers. I don't have my 18 here to wet up yet. My 18 inch rollers just showed up. That's a good sign. So this is very interesting. I have never applied epoxy on non-prepared concrete. I really didn't know what to expect. But it's actually penetrating right in here. A lot more than I thought it would. I'll carry the uh, camera out here and give you a close-up then. So I'm going to take some weight off the squeegee here. I want to make sure this is heavy enough. So I'm pushing a little bit of a puddle underneath here so it runs down over the side. Again, that's the huge advantage of not having your driveway here. I can just let a little puddle run over it. That won't hurt anything. Because you definitely want to make sure you prime all the areas, but especially outside there. That's it. Every tire that comes in here is going to hit this area. Yeah, these birds in here have been a nightmare I'm trying to do the right thing, but they keep flying in here, destroying everything. There's bird crap all over the walls and stuff. It doesn't make for a pretty garage.
Boy, this went a lot farther than I thought. So I'm going to push this back out here. And I'm going to do this area a little bit heavier. So I'm just taking some weight off the squeegee. Just pushing the puddle around. Yeah, this is soaking in really well. This is what you want for a primer. Off. I'll show you in detail where we're at. And we're going to mix up another one and keep right on going here. All right, so I still have to back roll this. But you see where there's areas where it totally soaked in. It's like gone. Like this area here, totally soaked in. It's actually dry. Now, this is the reason why I don't like the one day garage floors. If you use a rapid set material, that material would be set already and it wouldn't be able to penetrate like this low viscosity primer does. These are all areas where it's soaked in entirely. All right, let me mix up another one. We'll keep going. Okay, so I got the second batch, batch mixed up. My wife has volunteered to roll the front paper in there. She's doing that. I'm going to pour the second batch out here. So I pour these about every four feet or so, and I don't know, it's about an eight or ten inch wide puddle, something to that effect. That's my dog. One of my dogs. Okay, always wet your roller up before you need it. My dog is determined to get in this video. Do this one you can outside. If you have to go in, that's fine, I'll get it. Okay, so all these front edges. Oh, and can you grab that first one too? Thank you. My wife has never rolled epoxy before, but this is as real life as it gets because if you're doing your own garage fuller. And you need a little help, you may ask your wife or significant other for some help. And you may have, in my case, a dog in the background or a child screaming for your attention. That's what happens. Well, that's just the prime coat. I have to back roll the whole thing anyway. And then I put another coat on and then the flakes, which is very forgiving, so. All right, thank you. Just, just set it on the floor, I guess. That's fine, thank you. Okay, so this is the second batch. This should do about a thousand square feet, which we needed to come to about here to make sure we have enough. So we're about two or three feet over, so we're gonna have plenty. So I'm gonna mix up the last batch, squeegee that out, and then I'm gonna back roll this whole thing. Then I'm gonna put the intermediate coat on right away. Okay, last batch here.
You know, I have to leave a puddle underneath the tripod here. Okay, well now we have a problem. The floor is wet. I'm just going to set the tripod on one spot. So I'm pouring this out the same way. So this primer soaked in so much I could barely back roll it, which I'm sure you can kind of see. But that's good though. So now when we roll this intermediate coat on top of this, it's going to stick to the primer that kind of traded into the concrete. I'm actually using the same 18 inch roller. about three feet past that column there to make my 500 square foot per kit, which is right about there. Now I got the edges and I'm just going to squeegee this out. So again, the long working time of this material is great. So this primer has had about Probably 35, 40 minutes to penetrate in. And now I'm putting the intermediate coat on top. So it basically resets the, the timer to another 40 minutes once I get this on. This is going down very nicely. Now almost all the texture that was in the floor is gone. And you can see a little bit of the tops of like sand particles. but almost all the uh, texture of the broom finish is covered. So what I do in areas where I can't get the squeegee and I just like leave a little puddle. So when I come by with the roller, I can get that edge, that edge better. So I'm leaving it like a uh, one inch wide puddle going underneath this wood. So I'm definitely taking weight off of the squeegee now. Okay. I'm going to edge and back roll this, get the next one down, and then we're going to flake that first one. So they were supposed to come hook up power yesterday. No, I'm sorry, it's Saturday. Today's Monday. They are supposed to come Saturday and they never showed up. It's our local electrical company here. Kind of a little backwoods-ish, I think. But. So we're edged, 
all the way back to here. I'm gonna throw down one more batch, back roll that, and flake a little bit. Gotta take a water break. Okay. It's only this last bay here that has to get done. So just try to distribute that over the end. If it runs over, it's okay. So again, I'm taking a little bit of weight off this squeegee. Thank you. <laughs> Me too. Okay, now these are two batches that I have squeegeed out, so I'm going to back roll this, then I can start throwing flakes on, then I can do that last batch. Now this self levels like really, really nicely. So I already edged this, so I'm just going to do a quick edge with the 18 here. Now this is why I like to use an 18 inch roller. You can make really good headway with an 18 inch roller. If you were using a nine right now, you'd be going forward and backwards so fast to be whipping stuff all over the place. And all you're doing is trying to make this consistent. You know what? I'm going to keep coming back here because this is pretty much done already, too. I'm not going to come all the way back. That way, if I have a leftover puddle, I can push it out the door there and not go over the finished floor that I just did. Hopefully no birds flying here tonight. All right, so I got everything back rolled. Now I'm just gonna flake about halfway from that garage door out just to uh, get that down. I have about three quarters of a bucket. I have probably two or three more buckets full. So I'm throwing these up in the air, letting them blow around.
I always tell everybody get a like a consistent light coat over everything first. Make sure you have enough flake, and then come back and make it heavier. If you run out of flake now, now obviously I'm not going to run out. But if I run out now, there's nothing over there. You get the whole floor a little bit. That way, at least it's kind of consistent. And then from there, just start going around throwing more flake. And you're going to have a nice consistent look. I'm all about consistent flaking. I know a lot of people leave comments on YouTube. I use a seed spreader. I don't want to use a seed spreader. I prefer to do this. This is like my, my thing. So... <clears throat> I also want to watch. I'm leaving about five or six feet there. I don't want to get flake onto the area. I might have to back roll. Now, of course, I see lots of light spots yet. Which is fine. We're going to have plenty of epoxy here. Or plenty of flake. All right, I'm going to mix up that last batch, get that down, and then go nuts on the flake here. I just realized I poured flake. Across where I wanted to leave open in case I over poured. So I'm going to quickly move here. That's a little bit better. We gotta close that for a minute there. see that might, is my overpour right there. So I'm just going to take that, kind of push that pile around a little bit, and you can lose that with the roller. No big deal. That is done. I'm going to get my squeegee out of here. I'm going to do these edges with my six inch roller here. Six. Put this outside here. Hopefully, nothing falls over. I'm very much running out of room out here. And I'm going to have to move this out. I'm sorry. Hopefully, you can see a little something there. Jason speaking, can I help you? Good, how are you?
Thank you. All right. Bye. That was a customer who wants line striping on his floor that he just did out in, I want to say, Washington State. He's out there pretty far. Um, okay, everything is back rolled. I'm going to get this roller out of here. And then we're going to start to flake. I need to drink a little water first. Oh God, I almost lost the camera. You see that? That would have been ugly. Let's see if that stays up when I do that. Okay. All right, I'm going to start flaking. It's empty, got to refill more flake. Hope I can do this without falling into wet epoxy. All right, another full bucket. Then I have about half of another bucket. So I'm going to try to get everything fairly consistent here. Then I'm going to go around, go a little heavier. And I'm probably just going to end up throwing all the flakes I have out. Just make it consistent. Batch of flake. Okay, so here we are, day number two. Uh, it's very important that you scrape this floor aggressively in three directions with a good metal floor scraper to knock down any sharp edges from the flakes.
Okay, Jeff is on his way here now. He should be here in about 20 minutes or so. Just want to give you a quick walk around here. So what I'm going to be doing, and of course this is my garage, so I like to experiment with other materials. We're doing the urethane, the high performance urethane over this entire floor, which is going to give us a glossy look. It probably won't be high gloss, but it will be gloss. It will be easy to clean. Um, and we're doing that because this urethane is much easier to work with than the polyaspartic over a large area like this. Yesterday, and I don't know if you're going to be able to capture this on the video, I did this whole floor by myself, 1,500 square feet. I squeegeed out the prime coat and you saw it penetrate into the floor. That is absolutely huge. If you use a polyaspartic that is fast setting, there's no way that's going to penetrate into the concrete like the primer does that I installed here yesterday. So I installed the primer, I installed the intermediate coat immediately right on top of it, and then I flaked it. And I bet you this was on the floor at least an hour um, and did not set up on me. It's also imperative that you do not leave epoxy in the bucket once you mix it. You mix it, you pour it down, you squeegee it out, you back roll it, you have plenty of time to work with it. That is the advantage of epoxies. So this is what we have here. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get that urethane down today. Now what I am gonna do though, this is what I was saying, the, uh, the front edges from that two by four out, I'm going to play around. We've potentially developed a single component polyaspartic and I'm going to put it just on this nose here to test it. Not that the urethane won't work. The urethane is 100% UV stable. It would be a great material, but I need to try it somewhere and I'm never gonna sell something if I don't use it myself first. So we're gonna do the 100% um, polyaspartic single component on the front noses. Everything else is gonna be the high performance urethane. I'll show details on, on video so you see exactly what's going on with everything. We have two. 18-inch rollers that Jeff and I are going to use for the urethane and a six-inch edger. Now, by the way, this urethane, uh, we're going to pour this out on the floor in little, little white, or little stripes, I'm sorry, little stripes, and then we're going to roll across the stripes to get the consistent floor. Normally, we squeegee our top coats, but you can't squeegee out a urethane. Um, it's going to get tacky on you before you can uh, back roll it. So that's what we're going to do. To just want to show really quickly. This is our high performance urethane. These are three gallon kits. There's three single gallons um, in each box here that we're going to mix in a bucket and then pour it from a bucket into a watering can. And that's what we're going to pour. I, I cut the end of the watering can off. So your fingertip fits in there. Um, so I can pour it evenly on the floor before we back roll it. All right, what I did want to show here, this is the high-performance urethane, the three-gallon kit I was talking about. You get two parts of A and one part of B. Now, when you get these kits, they have little clips on the top just so the, the lid doesn't pop off in travel. I always use, it's like an ice pick kind of thing, an awl, and that fits, that fits in there really good to pop those off. So I'm just going to pop all these off. mix all this in the five gallon bucket. Now one thing I do want to say, urethane is not like epoxy. When you mix up three gallons of epoxy in the bucket, you need to get it out of the bucket and get moving because if you leave it in the bucket, it's going to set quickly. So this urethane, I can mix this up in this five gallon bucket. This can sit in the five gallon bucket for hours unaffected. Um, so once Jeff gets here, we're going to mix all this up in the bucket. It's going to stay in the bucket. I'm going to keep refilling the watering can and then going out and pouring stripes so we can back roll them. So when you're dealing with covering a floor, coverage is very important. So we're putting this material down at 166 square feet per gallon. Um, three gallons covers 500 square feet. So this building is 30 foot by 50 foot. It's 1,500 square feet. So I took the 50 foot length, divided it by three, it's 16 feet. 
These are 10 foot doors. I have two feet between the doors. So there's 10 foot, 14 foot. So two foot past this door right here is 500 square feet. So our first kit I'm gonna pour out, it's gotta reach that mark. We're very close to it. Um, and then the same thing, we're gonna go another 16 feet and another 16 feet and then we're in good shape and we'll be able to get this whole thing done with three kits and it will be very consistent. Okay, so we're getting all set. One last thing I need to do is put the aluminum oxide down. So here is the aluminum oxide that we use. Now, I always tell people little pinches of this aluminum oxide is all you need. I know you're kind of far back here. Now, I'm going to go a little heavier in front of these doors as opposed to the back because this is where you might come in with wet feet. So I'm just going to take little pinches, little pinches, and I'm going to throw them like that. to do this in a consistent pattern because you can't see where you put this. A little bit goes a long way. Now I'm going to turn this so you can see when I do the doorways here because this is kind of important. This is where you come in with wet feet. So little pinches, throw it up in the air. A little heavier here than normal, just because of that. And that's it. And I mean, God, I, I, I use so little, you can't even tell I took any out of this. That's for 1,500 square feet. Now I'm going to mix up the material and we're going to get at it. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to mix all three gallons up in a five gallon bucket, fill this watering can, pour it out in a nice pattern and get moving here. So this is a two to one mix. This is part B. Two parts of A to one part of B. Now we're definitely wearing respirators inside because the urethane does have a high odor. Uh, so does the polyaspartix. Uh, clear epoxy, our standard top coat, has virtually no odor. I can't say none, but it's very, very minor. So if you're looking at doing this in your basement or something like that, the standard top coat is very user-friendly, uh, very low odor. Uh, that, if you're using indoors in a confined area, is not very offensive. This, in a uh, confined area, can be pretty smelly. A three gallon mix, low speed mixer, make sure you're on low speed. And just like mixing epoxy, you want to make sure you get the edges really good. I always go in a nice circular pattern, get the edges good, go up and down along the edges. Very important that you mix your materials properly. That would be an absolute worst nightmare if you don't. So this goes down at the same rate the epoxies go down. It's 166 square feet per gallon. One three gallon kit will cover 500 square feet. Now, I have to fill my water can without dumping this all over the place. Okay. 
I'm going to set this here so I can grab it from the door to refill this. I'm going to set that there. I'm going to go and get my spike shoes on and we're going to get out. Okay, here we go. I'm going to put my respirator on so it's going to be muffled. Okay. Jeff also needs to wet up his roller, so I'm just going to leave a little puddle here for his roller. Jeff's going to work on that. I'll help him do the edges. Hopefully you can hear me here. All right, so I poured out, that was three gallons, that's our 500 square foot. Here, I'll keep edging. Yeah, that rolls quickly too. That's nice. This is actually really nice. It's, it's thin. Yeah, it's easy to work with. start mixing up the next batch. Man, I think it looks great. Wow, this is very easy to work with. I like this.
I did, yep. Right, let me step out here. I can grab your roller and stuff. Okay, folks, we are back now. This is um, day number three. Uh, we did the prime coat, intermediate coat on the first day with the flakes. Uh, we did the urethane top coat yesterday. Now I'm standing on the urethane top coat. I'm going to show you what this looks like. I also want to explain the black plastic on these windows. All right, so here we go. This is the final product. This is the um, dark gray base coat, the FB414 gravel flake, and the urethane upgraded top coat. The advantage to the urethane is it's 100% UV stable. Um, it's a thinner material when you apply it, so it gives you a little bit better texture, but it's still smooth enough you can mop it, but you have some better natural texture. Uh, and it's easier to install. You can install that. We poured that out yesterday and back rolled it. That's a very easy install top coat. Uh, the polyaspartics, you have to race around to get the polyaspartics on, and you don't need to do that with that urethane. So you can kind of see the gloss there. I think this turned out really good. I, again, as a no prep floor, you can see some of the imperfections because this was finished by hand. So you can see some of the waves from finishing the concrete. It is what it is. Now, if you were to grind this whole floor, it would all be very consistent. But that's not what I wanted here. I wanted to, to prove how this material goes down on an unprepared broom finished floor to show how well the primer penetrates in and bonds. Um, so this is the finished product. If you're interested in installing this in your garage, look us up and I can help you out. I'm going to have links below to the materials um, available in our store. Um, if you like what you're watching, please subscribe, hit the like button, and we'll catch you on the next video.